Aladdin is a classic Disney masterpiece filled with magic, adventure, and more secrets than the sands of Agrabah. Let's give this lamp a rub and see what happens. Aladdin, voiced by Scott Weinger, is the street rat who would be a sultan thanks to his new true and blue friend, the genie, played by the incredible Robin Williams. But did you know the story of Aladdin was actually teased in another Disney film before the movie even came out? Just the year prior, in Disney's Beauty and the Beast, you might remember when Belle visits the bookseller in the beginning. She borrows a book she's already read twice before. She says it's her favorite because of the far-off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, and a prince in disguise, all of which describe Aladdin perfectly. And there's a cool Beauty and the Beast easter egg found in Aladdin. Remember when the Sultan is building a tower out of the menagerie of toy animals? Look closely near the top and you might just find a familiar character hiding among the beasts. It's the… well, the Beast, aka Prince Adam. In order to become a prince himself, Aladdin must first enlist the services of the great and powerful genie. On first meeting the genie in the Cave of Wonders, Aladdin is treated to a song and dance number in which the larger-than-life genie explains the endless possibilities of Aladdin's three wishes. During the song, Friend Like Me, watch as the genie pretends to be Aladdin's waiter. When he jots down Aladdin's order, did you notice anything interesting? He zaps the order from right to left. That's because he's actually writing in Farsi. If you're versed in Farsi and have a quick eye, or at least a fast pause finger, then you also know that what he's written on his pad is an order for turkey and rice pilaf, and a turkey is the very next thing the genie turns into. I mean, I'd have wished for a steak or a lobster if I had a genie at my service, but you know, to each his own. Another example of the animator's attention to detail comes in the form of the list that the genie pulls from Aladdin's ear later in the song. When Genie sings, you got a list three miles long, no doubt, you'll notice that Aladdin's wish list is in Arabic. For some reason, the Genie sure seems concerned with Aladdin's diet. In the same number, he tells Aladdin to have some of column A, try all of column B. Well, column A has a lot of meats, veggies, cheeses, and cake. Column B is an entire column of fruits. Sure, they're naturally sweet, but that's a lot of sugar, man. Genie needs to brush up on his nutrition knowledge. As fun and catchy as the song is, the Cave of Wonders is no joke. When Aladdin and Abu attempt to escape on the flying carpet, molten lava and flames surround them. Pay close attention to the large tongues of fire that almost engulf them. Maybe tongue is the wrong descriptive word, because if you look at the flames, they're actually shaped like giant hands. Of course, Aladdin, Abu, and Carpet all eventually escape unscathed, leaving the cave behind to become a distant memory. Or maybe not. Did you ever take a really close look at the design of the magic carpet? The Cave of Wonders is literally woven into its fabric. Each corner shows the tiger head sand guardian that protects the entrance to the cave. There's another interesting detail to be found in the Cave of Wonders. Right when Aladdin sees all the treasures within, take a look at the tall winged human horse thingy. This is a statue of Alamasu, which is a spirit from ancient Mesopotamian legends which had the body and might of a bull, the face and mind of a human, and the wings of an eagle. More legends of the time are also alluded to in Friend Like Me. The genie's first lyrics of the song are, Well, Alibaba had them 40 thieves, Scheherazade had a thousand tales. Did you know that Alibaba and Scheherazade are characters in a much longer anthology known as Arabian Nights? Alibaba and the 40 Thieves is a story about a woodcutter who overhears a group of thieves gain access to a cave of treasures using the magic words open sesame and close sesame. If you ever wondered where that phrase came from, now you know. Scheherazade is the narrator of the thousand tales in Arabian Nights. Why is she telling a thousand stories? Because she's telling them to a jealous monarch who plans to behead her the following morning. He never does, though, because she stops telling each story in the middle so that he must keep her alive to hear the end the following night, as well as the beginning of yet another incredible tale. At the end of a thousand and one nights and a thousand stories, one of which is the story of Aladdin, by the way, the monarch falls in love with Scheherazade and marries her. Back to the movie setting. Did you know that the fictional city of Agrabah was supposed to be a real Middle Eastern city? Aladdin was supposed to be set in the capital city of Iraq, Baghdad. Why the change? Well, if we open our history books, we're reminded of the Gulf War, where American forces were sent to the Middle East in 1990. It was decided that it might not be the best idea to set the movie in a town currently recognized as a war zone, so director John Musker moved some letters around, added one, dropped one, copied one, and Agrabah was born. Did you know that Musker, along with co-director Ron Clements, can be seen walking through the rough and tumble streets of the city? Take a look at the two townsmen talking about the new suitor for the princess. There they are, in animated form. 
They aren't the only citizens of interest. There's a peddler at the beginning of the movie who gets our story started. Does his voice sound familiar? That's because it's the voice of Robin Williams, our beloved genie. There were rumors going around that the peddler is actually the genie in disguise. According to Ron Clements, this is absolutely true. They had plans to reveal the secret at the end of the film, but the story and editing changes caused the reveal to be cut, like the hand of a thief. Dark transition? Well, that's how they do in Agrabah. Check out the scene where Jasmine kindly gives an apple to a little boy, not realizing that she needed to pay for it. If she can't pay with money, she's gonna pay with her hand. Watch closely as the street merchant, later known as Farouk in the series, grabs her arm and holds it to the wood counter of his cart. Blink and you'll miss it, but before her arm lands you can see there are cuts already scarring the grain of the wood, meaning this isn't the first time he's had to lop off a thief's hand at the wrist. Needless to say, as the daughter of the Sultan, Jasmine is not your normal citizen of Agrabah, and yet Aladdin catches her eye. The same can't be said for Aladdin when it comes to the other ladies in town. During his opening number, One Step Ahead, he finds himself in the home of three young women and their mother. As he flirts his way out of the window again, watch their reactions to him. They don't want to give him the time of day. But fast forward to his entrance into the city as the rich and powerful Prince Ali and watch them fawn all over him. Funny how that works. But they're a little too late because Aladdin only has eyes for Jasmine, voiced by Linda Larkin. Aladdin gives her a memorable ride on his magic carpet and cue the famous song A Whole New World. Did you see Carpet pick a flower for Aladdin to give to Jasmine? Keep an eye on that flower. Jasmine wears it in her hair for the remainder of the number, but later you can find it in a vase on her vanity and it's blooming like their love. Cue the canned audience awe. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Did you know that during A Whole New World and all the other musical numbers, Scott Weinger and Linda Larkin ceased to be Aladdin and Jasmine? It's pretty common in the voice and musical film biz for the actors' voices to be replaced with singers' voices where songs are involved, and Aladdin is certainly no different. Aladdin's songs are performed by Brad Kane, and Jasmine's vocals were provided by Leah Salonga. You can watch them performing the live-action version of A Whole New World during the 65th Academy Awards ceremony from 1993. This next sequence reveals a couple more interesting facts. Carpet has brought Aladdin and Jasmine to the Parthenon. As we already know, the setting of the movie was originally supposed to be Baghdad. The Parthenon is in Athens. That means Carpet flew them over 1,200 miles in the span of one pop song. Check out the second time Aladdin does his super smooth apple down the elbow move. Apples are significant in regards to ancient Greece because they were sought after by Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of beauty and love. Smooth move, Aladdin. Our true lovers can't have their happily ever after served up to them on a silver platter, though. Someone's gotta get in the way and make them fight for it. And that someone is Jafar, royal vizier to the Sultan, voiced by Jonathan Freeman. Though armed with magic spells and an unquenchable thirst for power, it turns out that Jafar is actually his own worst enemy on the road to becoming Sultan. Remember when Jafar takes the Sultan's blue diamond to be used in a spell? To help find Jasmine a suitor, he really uses the diamond to reveal who is worthy to enter the Cave of Wonders. Well, in the case of Aladdin, he inadvertently found both. Way to go, genius! It just goes to show that evil and brilliance do not necessarily have to go hand in hand. And so, even when he does overtake our heroes, Aladdin is able to outwit Jafar by tricking him into becoming a genie. Jafar goes into a lamp and all his spells are broken, leading to probably the hardest easter egg to find because it happens super fast. Watch Jasmine's tiger Raja when he jumps into the Sultan's arms and is returned from cub to full-size tiger. In the middle of his transformation, watch his head turn into the shape of Mickey Mouse's head for a single frame. Talk about a hidden Mickey! I hope you liked the video and found some things you missed when watching Disney's Aladdin. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and easter eggs.